Hey folks, Krusty Old Marine with you. Uh, I'm back with you to do part two of the review and use of the uh, Mantis X uh, training system. I'm not going to call it dry fire because you can do dry fire and live fire with the Mantis X. Um, a little later in the video, I'm going to cover some of the differences of the uh, Mantis X2, the X3, the X10, uh, Laser Academy, and Blackbeard. So <clears throat> I shared with you what I did on day one. I've used the thing for five days. I found a lot of things about it that I really like. I found a few things that have been problematic and diving into the menu, I have found some fixes for some of those problems, but uh, all of them are not, uh, I've not gotten fixed yet. Uh, largely it has to do with the dry fire magazine that I ordered to use with it for rapid fire and draw stuff, but uh, I'm probably gonna cover that in another video. So let's dive into what I did uh, day two, three, four, and five. You saw what I did on day one. Uh, day two, uh, the Mantis X, it has a daily challenge. Uh, the daily challenge on day two was rollover drills. And uh, between that and some primary and weekend only shooting, because you saw that kind of sucky in my weekend uh, on the previous video. So that's what I did that day and fired uh, 130 rounds total that day. So the rollover drills, um, it had you rolling over upside down, aiming at a target. You go on the buzzer, you fire, then you roll over to the prone, and you fire from that position. A couple of issues I found with that when you're shooting inside. If your target's, you know, shooting inside, your target's usually fairly close. So my typical target that I have on the wall right back there, which is a scaled down 200 yard service rifle target, scaled down to be exact uh, size at 30 yards. I'm sorry, at uh, 10 yards because I've practiced service rifle up here too, uh, the offhand. But anyway, shooting at that target from the floor had to hold up, which was not a problem at all. But then when you roll over into the prone, it was too high. So you don't really get a good prone position. You're shooting like this. Um, that's not a fault of Mantis. It's uh, just a fault of the target that I picked. I picked out a lower target a little, a little later and found that it was, uh, it was a little bit problematic too. I found that in the rollover, I was better basically upside down, but three quarter on this side. And then when I go to the other side, go over and I'm three quarter on that side. Um, so that was an issue with that. Um, that was the fix to it. Um, and then in the uh, support hand uh, and primary hand only drills, I found that occasionally the Mantis gets uh, what I'm calling stupid. Uh, on a score that it reads it like like it completely misses a round that you fired and then sometimes it will record something uh, for example it recorded one at a 1.9 uh, yeah right no I don't shoot that bad and once a 35 uh, while covered in here you can delete those in the menu as you're going and I'll show you which uh, which of the menu pages I like best during a, a firing exercise I did discover some things about my grip, not because of, well, I guess indirectly on what it was telling me that my faults were, like uh, squeezing my grip too tight, uh, breaking my wrist too far forward. Uh, I adjusted the grip in my fingers a little bit. It didn't suggest that, but I found adjusting the grip in my fingers a little bit uh, helped fix that. And that was especially true in the uh, uh, weekend only drills. And another thing I discovered is, I told you in the last video, I've been trying to transition to shooting with both eyes open. I'm not really doing that so much now. Um, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing like a IDPA course or USPSA or combat style shooting where I'm engaging multiple targets, yes, I'm shooting with both eyes open. But if I'm doing a slow fire precision type stuff, I'm shooting with only one eye open. Uh, so for strong hand, I'm shooting with my dominant eye open like that. And for weak hand, I'm shooting with the weak eye only because that's more in line. I feel like if you're using your dominant eye and a weak hand, you're get, probably getting some parallax issues. So using that weak eye helps make it a little bit stronger too. Um, on day three, uh, let's see, what did we have? I did a, it brought up another benchmark drill there and the benchmark drill is just to kind of give you a baseline of where you're at um, so 
as you go along in the basic marksmanship or advanced or intermediate marksmanship, it'll show you improvement. For example, on the first benchmark drill that I took, I had a score of 91.5. And I did another one today after today's training session, and my benchmark now is 93. So, you know, I'm a pretty decent shooter. Um, so 90, 91 and a half is good. When you start getting up in that 90, 93, 95, 97 range, every time you step up, it's going to be even harder to get better. You know, you're going to have to put in, it's like any, any kind of sport. You're going to have to put in a lot more work to make those very small gains. Um, but on day three, let's see what did I found. Uh, oh, I adjusted the sensor. So, weapon is clear. Unloaded. Um, the sensor. When you turn it on, I noticed that it's just a, a least little bit wiggly. And I thought, hmm. I wonder if I push this little piece up, if that would tighten it up. It didn't tighten it up, but I, I messed with it a little bit. And I think the sensor got a little bit out of whack that day. Um, and I think it affected the calibration on it. I tried to go back and recalibrate it, but it was not cooperating at all doing any kind of recalibration. I turned the uh, sensor off, shut the app down, waited a minute or two or three, even on a couple of tries, because typically when you turn it on, Turn the sensor on, go to train. It's going to tell you to lay the weapon down flat, and it'll go through a calibration. Uh, there's something in the expanded menu we'll cover in a minute, but it talks about another way to calibrate yourself. But I did notice at that point that it seemed like my shots, uh, recording shots, were getting off a little bit. So I don't know if I affected that or not, but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, found out on day three that uh, it's still recording shots. Uh, sometimes when the weapon is completely down and you're racking the slide, uh, found out the system records off a uh, high frequency vibration of like a hammer falling or the striker going forward. Um, we'll look at that in the expanded menu in a, in a few minutes. But uh, uh, when it's recording those crap shots or what really weren't shots, you can delete those on most of the stages. Uh, if you're doing rapid fire stuff, you can't delete them that I, well, I haven't tried to. Uh, slow fire stuff, you can delete them, except when you get to shot 10. Shot 10, uh, if it's a 10 shot exercise, it's going to end. You can't delete that. Well, you can delete it, but it's still going to, it's still going to be in your uh, calculations. Um, also on day three, I discovered that it has audio settings. Um, I didn't have any audio on before. It's got, uh, you can have it chime when you make a shot. You can have it make a little shot sound when you record a shot. Or you can have a, an audible call from uh, Bitch and Betty. Um, she's on there. Uh, I kind of like having her telling me what my scores were. And uh, she's a little bit sexy sounding. Uh, let's see, on day four, uh, not calibrating on startup again. Um, that was on the that was an on the floor daily drill uh, from the sitting position on the floor. And I did uh, support only and primary only. Um, that's kind of the day I discovered that when I'm shooting weak hand, I'm going to shoot with weak eye. Uh, my scores are much better that way. You can select various pistols or rifles in the app. Uh, I'll show you that in the menu. Um, and you can add, uh, whatever you like to see on day four. I'm still getting the occasional shot, uh, record when there's no shot. Um, uh, one other thing I found out with this. Uh, especially when I'm shooting. I don't shoot a lot of service pistol. I shoot service rifle. The service pistol, you know, is largely it's, uh, primary hand or weak hand only. It's not a combat style of shooting. So I've discovered in that that it's really easy with that kind of stance. It's really easy to get out of some uh, habits of firearm safety. Uh, for instance, you know, sweeping your hand or sweeping your foot when you're in that. So you need to be real conscious of all the uh, tenets of firearm safety when you're using this thing and practice them. Uh, yes, you're checking it. You know it's empty and whatnot, but let, let's don't do stupid shit like, you know, sweeping the muzzle with your hand or sweeping your foot, sweeping your leg. If you practice it here, then when you're on live fire, it's going to be more ingrained and you're less likely to blow a hole in your foot. That kind of covers uh, most of the issues. 
Let's switch views here and look at some of the menus in depth and I'll cover some more of this stuff in, in that part of the video. So I'm kind of a loud talker. I've got to be careful here and not over modulate the microphone like I usually do with the camera in this close. I don't have a lavalier mic. Maybe one of these days I'll get one, but let's dive into some of the menu things here. So this is the page I've got, basic mark, marksmanship. Uh, I've gotten through six challenges of it, uh, and it records that for every day. So it looks like it's, you're going to take uh, a few days to get through all of that. You got holster draw analysis. Haven't done any of that yet because I've got the dry fire magazine, and I've got the Picatinny rail holder uh, on it but that's supposed to set in place for 24 hours before it, uh, before you use it. So start using some of that tomorrow. And, um, I've done a lot of testing with that dry fire mag. That's going to be in a separate video. Okay. We've got draw while, while sitting. I did that today. Um, let's go to history. Uh, where was it? Uh, draw while sitting. I did one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think those were 10 round increments, average score of 86, five. Yeah, 10 shots, 86.5, average time of 2.23 seconds. Uh, interesting drill. Uh, a lot of the drills in here are really interesting. I haven't got to anything yet that I feel like, oh, that's really stupid. Uh, of course, today I did some support and primary hand only. That was, uh, uh, that was part of the basic marksmanship units today was to do support and primary hand only, and it records it. Uh, and then also did compressed... Uh, surprise break, um, which that's like being ready, being on target and just seeing how quick you get, get the shot off. And I did 200 rounds of open training. Um, uh, those were all 10 shots, 20 sessions. And again, that was all just working with the uh, dry fire magazine. I'll share that in, in that separate video. Um, go back to here. Uh, got all the drills open training shot timer. We looked at a lot of this stuff yesterday. Um, haven't got into the elite and advanced or basic and advanced combat yet, but let's go to some of the settings. So you can go in here, you can set your gun type pistol or rifle and I've got pistol. I've got it set up uh, SIG P320 9 by 19 That was in there. I haven't changed it to the X5 Legion. It doesn't matter uh, as far as how it records it. It's got a whole slew of pistols in there and then you can also add, add a new same with the rifle uh primary hand uh you can tell it right or left shot detection mode uh if you're going live fire or dry fire and then more now what i found on the more is i experimented around with a lot of these to try to get the dry fire magazine to work better like using dry fire double action dry fire universal and when the pistol is hooked up like it is now, a SIG P320 dry fire. Uh, another interesting thing, you may see that number 65 down there, and you see this number 60 up here. If you go in there to settings, you can do a minimum score threshold. I've got a min minimum score threshold of 60 right now, because like I said, I'm a pretty decent shooter. I don't ever shoot anything that's a 60. So if it's going to record a crap shot like it did that 1.9 or the uh, 35 or a 50 it's it's not going to record it it's only going to record a 60 now bitch and betty she'll call it but she will not uh record it so let's go to let's go to the benchmark so <clears throat> here's some of the different uh menus you have when you're shooting you've got the target page you have the page that has all your shots and you can click on any one of those and it'll take you to the trace uh, these little marks right here, like, uh, it'll show you where you shot. And when I'm shooting, I, I do just like I do in service rifle. I call my shot. Um, so like if I, you know, if I call it center, that's a center mass shot. If I call nine o'clock, it's a nine o'clock. Or if I call three and by and large, this records just like I called. Um, sometimes I think it doesn't, but I'm not sure if it's the app or if it's my call. You know, sometimes we make a bad call and I'm sure the app sometimes makes a bad, bad record as well. Um, I don't particularly like this page when I'm going through a scenario. I don't like that page, although that page is helpful to come back and review. You can see the, your trace movement, 
my favorite page is that page right there. And why I like that, it, to me it gives me the most information uh, that I can get at one time. Uh, she'll call my shot, it'll show me my cant, it'll show me my trace, and the X is where the shot uh, broke, and it gives you a, a shot score. Let me give you an example of her. Let's go to, uh, let's go to train, and what do we have? Let's just do, um, let's just do open, open training. I don't have the unit on. It's got dry, right, and forward. That's all good. It's going to say connect. Let's connect. I'm going to turn this, I'm going to turn it on. It is connecting. Now it says set the gun down on still surface to calibrate. That's what it wasn't doing the other day. Um, there's some things in the troubleshooting we'll look at. So, open training. I'm going to go start. That's the, the target page is the one it pulls up on. But like I said, I like the trace page. So, I'm going to go here. I'm going to take a shot. 98. So, she gave me a 98. It's instant feedback. I like her voice. Man, ain't she sexy? Um, it shows where the shot broke and it shows the can. Now, I have an average, but I don't have an average yet because I haven't taken more than one shot. Let me take another one. 94. A 94. And I had a can of 2.2, or average of minus 1.1. That's one of the things I've been working on is uh, trying to fix that can, be a little bit better about it. You know, for close-in stuff, it's not that important, but when you start getting some distance, uh, it's going to become a lot more important. 93. So 93. And that count was uh, 2.8. So you get the gist, and this is why I like that page, because I feel like it gives me the maximum amount of information. So let's, uh, well, one more thing here. Let me just make a crap shot, just so I can say, That didn't even record that one. Why is this thing not recording? 93. 93. <laughs> that was interesting. 64. Okay, that was a crap shot. And I purposely pulled that off to the left. There's a little garbage can thing there. I can delete that shot. Are you sure you want to delete this shot? Yes. So now it's gone. Um... I think that covers that pretty good and, and why I like that page so well. So let's go back to the uh, menu stuff. So we talked about all the different drills in there. Uh, you can go back, you can review all your history. I'm going to, I'm going to delete that one. That one was just for the uh, camera here. So alt to delete. All you have to do is slide that over. You can undo it, but nope, now it's deleted. Settings. We were talking about dry, we talked about more. Under uh, the more, we talked about setting a, sh a minimum shot threshold. Mount direction, covered that the other day. Mount location, uh, I'll be changing that uh, later when I put it on the bottom of the magazine. It's got an expanded menu there. How is the device mounted on the firearms? It mounted on the bottom or the side or the top of the firearm. If you're shooting a pistol and have it mounted on either an accessory rail or a uh, mag rail adapter, and you likely want bottom selected. This is just so the device knows which way is down. Um, profile. Crusty Old Marine. You can go in there. You can edit it. You can make it public or private. Um, I guess that's... I, I'm not even sure where it shares that stuff. So, have audio feedback. Uh, off. Chime. Speech. Shot. Let's go to shot and just see how... This is, this is another reason why I like... Uh, just listen to Bitch and Betty. Let's go to train again for a minute. Uh, open training. Start. And you're going to hear the little fake shot that it makes. Hear that? That's kind of wimpy. And I don't know. Let's see if I go to that page. Is it going to... If it's going to give me a score. I don't think it is. It's just going to give me the... Uh, sound. Yeah, still have to look at your score. So 
No, I'm not really thrilled with that. Uh, everybody's different. They can use whatever you can use whatever you like, but uh, so on the audio feedback, I'm going to go back to uh, speech. Bitch and Betty. I really like her. I got announce ready on and off. Each one of these has a little question mark. You can expand the menu. Um, you can disconnect Bluetooth instruction guide. It's got a lot of crap in there on how to set this thing up. That's why I said the other day, unless you're an idiot, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to get set up and get going with this. And if you're that stupid, then you probably ought not be shooting. Um, uh, let's see. Common questions, troubleshooting, um, will not calibrate. Now I ran into this the other day. Uh, it's connected, it will automatically calibrate in the background or instruct you to place the Mantis X on a still surface while it calibrates, which takes two to three seconds. A um, lot, of, lot of troubleshooting tips in there if it's not doing that, but I only had that one day where I had calibration issues with it. Uh, not detecting shots. That, that's an issue I had today with the uh, dry fire mag and I'll cover that uh, in that video. But I think that covers all this uh, menu stuff pretty well. Uh, let's go to, oh, one other thing in this menu uh, settings, if you go down to the bottom here, it'll show you the estimated battery life. I've got 73%, it's got the app version, uh, serial number, and firmware uh, revision, and the model. This is the X10. So speaking of battery life, um, I used it for like uh, four days, number of sessions, I don't know how many rounds, but the uh, battery had gotten down to 29%. Um, I'm using a Samsung fast charger, um, two amps, 20 watts I think it is, and it charged it back up to 100% in an hour or less. I'm gonna say it was probably around 45 minutes. So it gets back to 100% pretty, pretty quick and not sure how many rounds you're going to get out of it. I've got a total right now of 683 rounds uh, I've used it with and I've had 78 sessions um, and that's in five days. Part of that's after the charge. So the battery life is pretty good and I'm averaging around 110 to 120 rounds, 125 rounds uh, a day uh, practicing. Um, like I said, said, my benchmark for in five days went from uh, a 91.5 average to a 93 uh, with all the different drills. I shoot an average of about seven yards. I can go back to 10 on my indoor practice area here. Uh, I shoot small, very small. That target right back there is, uh, like I said, it's a scaled down service rifle target, uh, scaled down to 10 yards and the black portion of that target is three quarters of an inch. So old adage, aim small, miss small. That's what you need to do with this Mantis. Takeaways after five days. It's a great tool. Um, that said, nothing takes the place of live firing. You can use this. It's going to make you a lot better shooter, but you still got a live fire because you don't get the recoil with this. You don't get the, the sound and the impact, you just a lot of variables that you don't get that you've got when you're live firing. Um, so keep that in mind, you still got a live fire. Uh, I talked about I was probably going to do a multi part series and cover the Laser Academy and the Blackbeard system, etc. etc. I'm not. This will probably be it uh, the Dry Fire Magazine review uh, and how it integrates with the Mantis X system. That will be the last one, but it's really a review on the uh, Dry Fire Magazine. And the reason I say that is after using this, the Laser Academy. What the Laser Academy does, as far as I know, it uses a laser round, kind of like a snap cap, that you put in whatever weapon you're using in, in this case would be a nine millimeter, and it projects the laser out. And you get to see where the laser dot is. I know where I'm freaking aiming. That's what my sights are for. I don't need a laser dot out there to tell me. I got a red dot in here. Sometimes I shoot irons. I know where I'm aiming. I don't need a laser to tell me that. Me personally, it's just going to be a waste of my money. A lot of you people, you might like it. You might love it. I'm not going to get it because it's not going to help me. Uh, the Blackbeard. The Blackbeard is a system where you put a magazine and an alternative bolt carrier group in an AR, and it resets the trigger for you every time. So if you're going to do rapid fire stuff, 
I discovered with this that mm, some of the rapid fire stuff maybe doesn't work that well. You'll have to watch that video to find out. But I don't do combat stuff with an AR. I mean, I did that in the Marine Corps. Uh, what I shoot with an AR is service rifle. We do rapid fire. Rapid fire, yeah. 10 rounds in 60 seconds. No, I don't need practice for that. What I need practice for in the service rifle is offhand. And in offhand, we're shooting slow fire. We have to hand feed each round. So just resetting the bolt every time, that's not an issue because I set the rifle down anyway to take a break in between each shot. I don't need the Blackbeard. It's another expense that uh, it's not going to benefit me. So I'm not going to have them, so I'm not going to do a review on them. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Yeah, I saw a uh, I saw a comment on Mantis's ad the other day on Facebook, and a guy said he was saying, oh, "I really like to have one, but it's so confusing. Which one do I get? What do they do?" Yeah, I found that when I was looking at this system too, because they make the Mantis X2. I guess there was a Gen One that they don't even offer anymore, but they make the X2, the X3, the X10, the Blackbeard, the Laser Academy. I just told you what the Blackbeard and the Laser Academy does and why I don't need it or, or want it. Uh, the X2, it looks like it's uh, it's the second gen. You have better battery life. It's uh, smaller and lighter. The X2 is dry fire only. You bump it up to the X3, it's the same as the X2, but you have both live fire and dry fire. You have the X10, which is the system I've got. You've got dry fire, live fire. It's for pistol. Rifle, shotgun, archery, and looking at the app, apparently you can use it on air guns as well. It also has recoil analysis and holster draw uh, drills for your pistol, which largely, uh, if you just, unless you're just going to shoot one shot, like I shot today from the holster draw setting, shooting one shot, yeah, that's fine. But uh, if you're going to do anything holster draw, multiple shot, you're going to have to have it mounted down here on the bottom of a magazine. So, do I think this was a good investment uh, the Colonel got me for $249? Yeah, uh, it's going to be very valuable. $249, it's, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a fair price on it. I'd like to have gotten it for, say, $150 or $160, but it is what it is, and uh, it is a great tool. I said I wasn't going to do any further review on this. That was, that's probably BS. I'm going to do one because I'm going to use it on my service rifle here in the next week. And uh, I'll do a video and give you some input and feedback on what I think about it for service rifle. I think it's going to be really good, especially the trace of it. Uh, that's one thing we've really got to watch in that offhand position in the service rifle. When you're breaking your shot and how much movement do you have in your hold. So yeah, if you're undecided, uh, I think it's probably a worthwhile investment. I covered the uh, differences in the X2, the X3, the X10 what the Blackbeard and the Laser Academy does. So, you know, you know your needs better than I do. You go out and get whichever one you want, but I think it's a good investment. So kids, in the meantime, remember that X's win matches and keep the greasy side down. Y'all take care.